Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here, and today we're competing mad scientists entrusted with a page from our father's journal and a large estate in which to perform our devious experiments. You'll be completing experiments, aiding the town in its endeavors, upgrading your estates, and hopefully completing your father's masterwork. My father's work is a Victorian mad scientist game enjoyed over the course of three generations for two to four players. It plays in two hours, is for ages 14 and up, and published by Renegade Game Studios. It's on Kickstarter right now, so I'm going to show you how the game works and I'll see you on the other side. This is a Kickstarter preview, so all the art and components you see here are prototype, they're not final. You're going to want to check the Kickstarter link in the description of this video to see all the final art and components. In my father's work, you're a competing mad scientist entrusted with a page from your father's journal and a large estate in which to perform your devious experiments. One of the things you're trying to do in the game is complete a master work towards the end, and there's different types like teleportation, the time machine, the creature, the giant spider chariot, immortality, love potion, all sorts of different things you can try to go for. You'll have one of these at the beginning of the game. Now over the course of the game, you're going to be gaining knowledge in chemistry, biology, engineering, and occult. You're also going to be gathering different resources like chemistry resources and gears, and you'll need certain knowledge in order to create this time machine, but you'll also have to have completed previous experiments that were a little bit easier, like levels of A, Bs, and Cs before you get to your final masterwork, the time machine, which will give you a ton of points at the end of the game, but it'll make you pretty creepy and pretty insane. Now this game works a little differently than other games, even though it's worker placement and resource management to the core of it. Now the game comes with one scenario box, which is the cost of disease. Now in this box are tons of components and cards that will be used for this scenario. Now this scenario also uses an app, which I'm not gonna show because graphically it's not quite yet ready to present yet, but it's functional enough for us to be able to play the game. And each scenario is almost infinitely replayable with over 350 different events that you'll choose different things and your paths will spider out and go down different ways in each game. Now one of the main ways to get points, other than getting that big masterwork towards the end, are completing experiments, so performing experiments, and there's different levels of A, Bs, and Cs, the easiest, mediums, and hards to be able to do. And even in the easier types, the A section types, there's different types of experiments like chemistry types, explosive assessments, or biology types, taxidermic exploration, or engineering types, light magnification, or occult types, dissolution of essential fluids. And you'll need different resources, like for example, this one you need an animal, uh, but you will be able to gain knowledge in different areas like biology and engineering by doing so as well as getting points. So everything in this game is also very thematic. Now looking at some B-level experiments, when you do sterilization, well, you'll get a little creepy and go down a creepy track, which will have different effects. Or if you do human to animal skin grafting, you'll go, eh, your insanity will go up, which is not necessarily a good thing. But if you create a telegraph machine, well, you'll get to, you know, be a little less creepy to other people. And if you enact a blood curse, you'll end up with a body and the mob is going to start acting up on you, the angry mob. Or maybe in the level C's, you're trying to create a fire-breathing eagle or the inside-out crocodile, an electric organ, or a one-way gate to the underworld. And these are going to be the hardest ones. You're going to have to complete at least one A and two B experiments before this. And they'll be worth even more points than the previous ones. And you'll get even additional points if you're able to do them earlier in the game. Now, each player is going to get their own miniatures. There's six different sculpts, and you get to decide which one is which. Which one's you, which one's your spouse, which one's your caretaker, and which ones are the servants. Now, each player will have their own estate and their own board, and they'll have themselves uh, a caretaker and their spouse in their estate to start the game to be able to do different things. Now, over the course of the game, it's worker placement. You're going to be able to be placing in different spots in your estate and out in the village. Now, the village is a main board where you'll be tracking scores. You'll be tracking your creepiness and your insanity. Uh, but you'll also have the village itself. Now the village will start with a certain page, which are essentially are worker placement spots that will get you different things. But depending on the scenario you choose, and depending on the different things that people choose within the app when certain things come up, there are plenty of different pages in here, and they are double-sided, and different places will come up at different times and different scenarios to give you different spots. So the game is going to be changing as you play, and regardless of which scenario you end up playing. 
Now, I mentioned that there's one scenario in the box with infinite replayability, but there are others that are going to be available directly through the stretch coals as well. Now, the game is played over three different generations, and each generation you're going to have three rounds, early, middle, late. Each round you're going to be in turn order, taking workers and placing them either in your estate or out onto the village, taking action, gathering resources and doing things like that. After everyone is done placing all their workers, you'll go to the second round, the middle and then late. And then there'll be certain things that happen at the end of each of these rounds, but there'll also be certain things that end at the end of the, end of the generations because you can't carry over money and resources and things like that throughout the next generation. So there's some interesting twists here. Now players on their turn are going to be placing one or more workers in a single spot, like maybe this player wants to go to the blacksmith, and they'll get certain things that are here, like for example here they'll get a gear, here they'd go to the farmer's market to get an animal, here they'll go to the park to get some chemicals. Now you can place more than one worker and do things twice, this happens to be that player's uh, themselves, and you can actually do things twice with them. Now if somebody else is already there, and I want to go there, uh, then actually what happens is I have to pay a coin in order to do that. So you can go to spots, they're blocked, but it makes it a little bit harder for you to do that. Now the components in this game are amazing, but again, check the Kickstarter link because some of these things are, you know, the, the variety of them are in the stretch goals and such, but like gears are these metal gears. Look at this, different types. Uh, coins are these metal coins. The bottles for the, the chemistry are literally bottles that you could take the top off of stuff. I mean, these components are just so cool and just draw you right into the game. And then look at this, when you get an animal, eh, just pick the one you want. Okay, I like the frog, I'll take that one. You know, it's really cool like that. Let's say maybe you want to go to the traveling caravan where you get an occult. This is a, a wild resource, but it does make you a little creepy. Or maybe you go here, which is the cemetery, you'll actually get a body. And the body resources in this game are really cool. Look at these things. I mean, they're just so, so cool looking for the resources there. But this one also is going to make you creepy, but it will also make the angry mob work towards you. See, there's a track up here that is the creepy track. And as you get creepy, this goes up. And if you make the mob bad, they're going to go this way. And if at any point in time, this mob and you and your creepy track meet each other, well, you're just a little, you know, they're just so mad at you because you're so creepy. You can't go anywhere in the village, except of course the church, because it makes you, you know, a little less creepy. Now, each scenario is gonna have different story points. As soon as the first person comes to the story point, like a four on this creepy track, in the app, they're going to read something specific and different things might happen. This person might have a secret thing that they look at and they make a choice. Or it might be a group choice where everyone tries to vote together with, you know, yay or nay. And depending on what happens in these, different things are gonna happen and it's going to spider down different paths of what the story will bring and what the game will bring, which means every time you play a scenario, it will play out differently. Much like there's an insanity track and certain things will cause you to, to be more insane. We showed you that with some of the experiments. And as you move up this track, again, if someone gets to here, another story point comes up where them might secretly or as a group might make a jo choice that will change the game forever for the rest of the game. Also, as you go down your insanity track, uh, there's also different things. See here, you'll become creepy, creepy again. Sometimes you'll actually lose your spouse to here uh, because you're just too insane. Uh, but sometimes you'll be gathering these cards. Now these cards are compulsion cards. You only collect one of them when you get those, but they'll give you certain things that you kind of have to do. Like you must collect an animal. If you do so, you'll get two points. Great. You must complete an A-level experiment or must collect a chemical. Now this is secret, but when you do this thing, you flip it over and you get those points immediately. So they're not terrible, but they do make you sort of wait waste turns, but you will get points for those. But if you end up with two of these that you haven't completed, and it's at the end of a generation, you end up getting a maladjustment. You get one of them, and they're different things, like must be loved. During the late years, for each creepy you gain, you lose one point. Now that's the late years are essentially like the third round of a generation. Or the existential crisis. If you end the generation on space six or higher on the insanity track, you lose five points. So even though these things aren't bad, if you don't do them, they'll turn into these things that, you know, just make it harder for you to do things. Now you're going out and gathering different things to try to perform experiments, and this is in your estate. Now you can go here, your, uh, you know, your caretaker can go there, your spouse can go there. Now servants are, uh, you don't really have them at the beginning of the first scenario, but you'll gain them over the course of the game, and they can go out and do things for you in the village. They can also come here and do things for you here, like you could use two servants to perform an experiment, but you'll end up losing them because they've seen too much, they're lost, they run away. You can get them back later, but things like that. So you might wanna go here and perform an experiment. Now, 
you, in order to perform a B experiment, you have to have completed at least one other A experiment here. To get a C, you have to have two Bs completed. To get a D, which is your masterwork, you'd have three Cs completed. So it gets harder and harder to do the better ones. For example, if you wanted to complete this, you need to turn in one of the chemistry bottles. And because of this, you're gonna get a point, but you'll also get a knowledge cube in chemistry and biology. And of course you have credit for completing an A one. So let's say you wanna use that biology uh, knowledge cube that you had gotten. You can send a worker here and record knowledge. You turn in that cube, and because it's the green biology cube, you'll move up on your recorded knowledge. Essentially, you're recording this knowledge, and now, for the rest of the game, anytime you do an experiment, you consider having one biology. So you're sort of, this is sort of like working your way up an engine building of knowledge, if you will. Now also, you'll be able to sort of discard some cards and gain some cards uh, when you do this action. And everyone starts with an A, a B, and a C experiment uh, at the beginning of the scenario anyway. Or maybe you go to a state affairs where you draw three cards and keep one, or you can just take a dollar, for example. Now, notice how these different knowledges do different things. Now, to get to this one, I'd have to turn in two of the biology cubes, but then I'd always have you know, two as sort of in my pocket for, for doing different things. But there's different abilities that unlock. Like this one, you can store two extra resources between generations because, as I mentioned, different things happen in the generations. You're not keeping your resources or your money in the different generations. And you're only able to keep one completed experiment. So when you're trying to do these perform experiments, it's, it's tough because you got to do as many as you can to try to get these ones, but then you'll be able to store one in each gen after each generation to try to store up your knowledge for those. And this allows you to store two extra uh, resources between them. This one allows you to, at the start of a generation, you get to gain a servant, which essentially is, a good, is another worker. Coming up here gives you a, a B-completed experiment, if you will. Now, the occults, those are wild resources, and so you, you get a little insane when you use them, but they're actually negative. As you go up here, sure, you can have one wild uh, knowledge to, to put towards something, but at the start of each generation, you get, you're going to go up on the on the creepy track. Or if you come here, uh, you'll have two wild, but at the start of the generation, you'll you know you'll you'll move the, uh, the the angry mob token and such. If you ever get to the end of a track, you get to have put a vanity uh, tile into your estate. Now your estate itself starts with the storage sheds and it says at the start of each generation you gain one resource of your choice. But you can see there's different things that you can build around your estate. As you get more and more, they're going to cost a little more to place here. And you can actually go to the builder's office to gain a, a piece of the estate that you can add there. And they do different things. They, they cost a certain amount of money, like four, zero, one. Uh, and they do different things like the extensive wardrobe. Your caretaker may visit the location in the town because typically we have different workers. The caretaker has to stay in your estate and the servants pretty much do most of their work out here uh, and things like that. So the different workers can go in different spots like that. The master bedroom, it's $4 and your spouse, which is one of your workers, can take the estate actions like a caretaker can, but sanity does not cause them to leave. So different things like that. But sometimes when you get these, the, the, the master bedroom actually makes you go up one of these tracks at the beginning of the generation. Or maybe you get servant's quarters where once per generation you get a servant, it's an extra worker. Or the, a clean ledger, you gain a dollar and at the start of each generation you gain two dollars. So you'll be building these up over time and giving yourself different abilities. Now we talked about getting to the end of one of those knowledge tracks and getting a vanity to add to your estate. And these are things like the rose garden or the moat or the catacombs or the operating theater or the Tesla coils. And these will typically give you points, for example. The moat will give you final scoring, give you 10 points. But at the beginning of each generation, you'll have some negatives there going up down different tracks and things like that. Now again, some things are specific to the scenario. Like in this scenario, you're trying to build a hospital. And if you go to the church, you could take, you could spend a certain amount of money to gain a certain amount of hearts. And whoever has the most hearts at the end of uh, each of the generations is going to get some points. But also, uh, whether or not you're able to build collaboratively between all of the hearts that players have, maybe you'll build a hospital or not. Maybe something else will get built in instead and that will have ramifications as to what buildings come out, what page is gonna be coming out here, and the options that players have in the game. So the game is very dynamic in that way. And a lot of that is run from the app. And again, even though I can't really show you the app, when those things triggers at different story points, some of the choices, it's kind of like a choose your own adventure. Do you want to do this to get this or this to get that? That gives you some story. Some of them are out loud. Some of them are secret. Some of them are collaborative. Some are not. It's a big part of the game. I can't show you it right now, but it is a big part of this game. And once all players have played all their workers, you'll go to the next round. You'll pull your workers back. Some of them might have been lost, depending on what you've done to them. And you'll actually lose them until you have a game event that helps bring them back. 
You'll also be discarding some of the lower ones and bringing some new tiles out for estates to buy. But once you've gotten to the late round, so the third round of a generation, you finish it, you'll end a generation. At the end of generation, you keep all your knowledge, but you can only keep one stored experiment. One of them that you've completed, you can keep for, you know, having completed this as you try to get better and better experiments completed. And you also get to keep one incomplete experiment in your hand to try to, you know, that you were working on, that you'll be able to work on next generation. Also, you're gonna be discarding all your resources and all your money and, and any other incomplete experiments other than the one you're holding. So a lot of things reset at the end of the generation. Not to mention the creepy and insanity tracks as well. And as you get to the third generation, there'll be new types of estates that you could buy that are from the third generation. Actually, the insanity track flips over too. It gives you some, some variability of that as well. At the end of third generation, whoever has the most points is the winner. Well, there you have my father's work. And as I showed in the overview, you'll need to balance study and active experimentation for three generations to win the game. Now, if you'd like to see the final art and components and all the different pledge levels available, you can click the link below me in the description of this video. It will take you directly to the Kickstarter project page. And I'm sure that Renegade Game Studios would love your support.